what is the human immunodeficiency virus and why is it associated with AIDS? Are you educated about HIV? Despite efforts to extend the life expectancy for people with HIV, there is no cure. This may scare you, and it is the same fear that the American public felt after media coverage on the virus gained traction in the early 1980s. HIV AIDS was novel but lethal to the states. Thus, it quickly became the decade's leading cause of death. The silence from the government was deafening. The Ronald Reagan administration failed to effectively address the HIV AIDS crisis. Moreover, the budget for AIDS research was minuscule considering the exponential rise in cases. First, the circulation of HIV AIDS misinformation was a direct result of apathetic federal attention. In the 1980s, one common misunderstanding was correlated between homophobia and AIDS. The alleged culprit for HIV AIDS was homosexual activity. The incomprehension of this virus caused vulgar terms like gay cancer to be created. Even credible newspapers like the New York Times spread the false news. The lack of awareness and knowledge of HIV fueled pre-existing homophobia. Moreover, HIV AIDS affected a broader audience than only homosexuals. This is where the story of three hemophiliac brothers from Florida begins. Ricky, Robert, and Randy Ray received periodic injections of Factor VIII for their blood condition. Hemophilia is a rare, inherited disease where the blood clotting abilities are blocked. At the time, the only treatment available were the Factor VIII injections made from thousands of donors' blood. Thus, this experimental process became a breeding ground for AIDS. In 1986, the Ray family's lives dramatically changed. The Ray brothers tested HIV positive from the unscreened Factor VIII injections. When it was locally revealed the brothers contracted HIV, the rumors unfurled in their hometown of Arcadia, Florida. One popular misconception was reportedly the Ray brothers contracted AIDS, but the truth is that HIV typically takes years to develop into AIDS. Despite repeated statements from medical professionals explaining the only ways to contract HIV were through infected needles, unprotected sexual intercourse, and birth, the myth persisted that HIV could be transferred through casual contact. Although, this was proved false when the Ray brother's sister and parents did not contract the virus. Even with the medical reports validating the Ray brothers' harmlessness, their elementary school continued to bar them from regular schooling. The Rays were denied the chance to have a normal education and social life. In February 1987, the Rays moved to Alabama to escape the negativity. Unsurprisingly, they were met with a similar response as in Florida. The school removed the Rays from the classroom. This showed that this was more than an Arcadia, Florida issue, but a nationwide epidemic of fear and miscommunication. Two months later, the Rays returned to Florida. The DeSoto County School Board, however, further denied admission into an integrated classroom. In May 1987, President Ronald Reagan delivered his first public speech about AIDS to the nation. He stated, I was told of a situation in Florida where three young brothers, ages 10, 9, and 7, were all hemophiliacs carrying the AIDS virus. The pastor asked the entire family not to come back to their church. Ladies and gentlemen, this is old-fashioned fear, and it has no place in the home of the brave. The Public Health Service has stated that there's no medical reason for barring a person with the virus from any routine school or work activity. From this moment forward, his administration appointed a commission to investigate the epidemic and launched the America Responds to AIDS campaign. So in August, the Rays went to court with the DeSoto County School Board, where Karen Locks, a behavioral specialist, along with other medical professionals, testified that the brothers' significant emotional distress, anxiety, and academic issues would be exacerbated from exclusion, and they posed no valid threat to their peers. With the unmistakable scientific evidence, the court declared that neither community fears nor parental pressure could turn over this case. It was formally acquitted that the Ray brothers would return to school. 
The press coverage of the Ray brothers after the court case and after President Ronald Reagan's speech blew into a national conversation of AIDS, and consequently the Ray brothers. Even so, Arcadian parents continued attempts to persuade the officials that the doctors were incorrect as frightened parents sent death threats and hosted anti-Ray Brother rallies, it was evident that people wanted the Rays gone. A few days after the Ray boys ignored the threats in Arcadia, an arson attack ravaged their home. This hate crime pressured the family to move to Sarasota in 1988. I don't necessarily believe that it was somebody in our community because by this time, our story was, you know, national news. Mm -hmm. It really turned into be a positive. It forced us to, you know, step forward and to continue educating and to continue moving forward. There, the Rays enrolled at Gosio Elementary School. Here, the children were more accepting of the Rays condition because of district-mandated education on HIV-AIDS. The children knew that, as the scientific research had articulated, there had not been one single case in the entire nation where AIDS had been transmitted through casual contact. The Ray brothers had been at the forefront of developments in medicine for both hemophilia and AIDS, showing the country that education is imperative in dealing with this health crisis and government intervention was necessary. Additionally, without the nationwide conversation on HIV, the fast drug development of antiretroviral therapy, or ART, which reduced morbidity for people with AIDS, would have never been created. The rage after the delayed government response to HIV-AIDS heavily influenced future research and quick technological advancements, and this it did. In the next decade, blood bank screening became stronger and for the next 30 years, the rate of HIV contraction through blood transmission dropped. I feel that today the blood supply or nothing like that would be as safe as it is without the hemophilia community and uh, all the sacrifices and the hard work that they have put in it. And I think it's gonna be safer for the rest of our lives as long as you know everybody stays on top of it and don't give up on it. In 1998, the U.S. Congress enacted the Ricky Ray Hemophilia Relief Fund Act. This relief fund was crucial in alleviating the financial stress on the hemophiliacs who contracted HIV from the unscreened Factor VIII injections in the 1980s, just like the Ray brothers. Close before his premature death in 1992, at only 15 years old, Ricky Ray encouraged news crews to come inside the hospital to communicate to the nation the truth of what AIDS looked like. President Bill Clinton was thus prompted to also call Ricky, thanking him for his activism and bravery and promising to find a solution. This hastened the government's response to instigate years of legal reform of the HIV AIDS epidemic, including the Clinton Foundation HIV AIDS Initiative. The Ray Brothers case created open discussions that we have about HIV AIDS with our youth. Education is crucial in developing our population's acceptance and knowledge towards this virus. This is like when the Sarasota children were more educated and understanding about HIV AIDS than the Arcadian residents. Florida has improved their willingness to provide sexual education to students today including performance tests concerning human growth and development, like the Health Education Analysis Tool. I think without the hemophilia community, it would have taken a long time for HIV to get medications that it needed, for people to understand that they weren't contagious to them to be around, to touch, to hug, to be in the same room with, to cut their hair, to serve them in a restaurant, it just shows you that a small group of people can make a huge impact. It's like a pebble. Pebble's very tiny. We managed to cause that ripple effect that affected everybody who's ever been infected with HIV.